I find that when it comes to writing scientific explanations for my middle school students, that they really struggle with understanding what evidence is versus reasoning and how to support their claim with evidence and use that reasoning to tie it up. So what I like to do at the very beginning of the year to introduce how to write a claim evidence reasoning paragraph is I like to use my students love for crime scene investigation, TV shows, movies, to get them really to understand how to write their claim, which is the solve in the case, how to use evidence from all the investigation forensic information and reasoning to tie that evidence into the claim and explain why they're using that evidence. Hi, I'm Christy. I'm a middle school science teacher with over 25 years experience in the classroom. And I love helping other teachers empower their students to take more ownership in their learning. Now, when it comes to writing a claim evidence reasoning, some students really struggle with what is the difference between evidence versus reasoning. So having them solve a case where they're actually using evidence from forensic information and lab reports, uh, police files and incidents reports, really helps students to distinguish the difference between what an evidence is and what reasoning is. So for my crime and setting investigation, my students have to solve the case of Sir Edward Berkshire III. You see, what happened was Robert Dursley, the butler, discovers the body of Sir Edward Berkshire III on Sunday morning when he enters Beckingham Manor. He invites the police over and the police take the incident's report and they interview the other people involved, Antonio, the chef, Suzette, the maid, and Sir William Berkshire, Edward's brother. So in this investigation, students get an incident report, it's a little folder here, and inside this information, it comes with the police report write-up about who was involved, what was happening, what observations were made at the scene. They also get some, of course, photography pictures of the crime scene itself with some zoomed in areas so that students can really see what's going on. They also get, of course, a profile report. So they have the personal profiles here and it goes into every single person, the deceased, the victim, the people involved, and it tells them information about them, possible motives, where they live, and where they say they were at when this incident took place. Then they get to go through actual forensics files. We have them looking at the fingerprints. They can look at those on file. They are looking at the blood types. So not only the blood that's found on like the mirror shard, but then that also they have to match it up with the blood types that were taken from the individual suspects. They go into the DNA analysis. They get an autopsy report. And of course, just like with all autopsy reports, you're gonna have a toxicology report. And the students, what they're doing there during this whole entire time is they are writing down information from the incident report, uh, the personal profile report, so they have the key information from that. They're writing down information from the evidence logs and what the key evidence from the reports are showing. And then what they have to do is they have to then decide what actually happened to Sir Edward Berkshire III. Was it foul play? Was it natural causes? what went on and then they have to not only state their claim which says this is what i believe happened to mr edward berkshire III. they have to use their evidences their key evidences that are going to support that claim and the reasoning why did they use that claim and i say you know you're doing an actual police investigation here as a private in um, investigator so whatever claim you're making you need to have strong enough evidence 
from all the reports that can be held up in a court of law. And this is where they can have these class discussions about what they think happened and why they think that and what evidence is being used and what evidence may be counteracts the someone else's claim uh, that maybe gives a reasonable doubt. And then I have these sentence starters to help them because you know some students need help writing in an academic language. So it kind of gives them those uh, starters to help them write more academic language uh, see, claim evidence reasonings. At the end, they put everything together. They're writing their claim evidence reasoning. They then put it together into one paragraph and they use their checkoff list to make sure that they've written their claim, they have evidence supported, their reasoning, and that it's grammatically correct. So by using these and using my students' love for crime scene investigations, my students can actually see the difference between evidence and reasoning because the evidence has to come from the actual reports here. And then the reasoning is why they think that happened, uh, why that evidence supports it, what they already know about this. So my students love doing this activity and I love doing it in the very beginning of the year to get them started because it's a fun way to introduce students to science, to why science is important. I mean, forensics is completely science there. You're introducing them to a possible career option later on and you're getting them to get excited about the school year by doing a crime scene investigation within the first week or so. So that's what I like to do to introduce claim evidence reasoning and get my students really excited about science and help them to understand the difference between evidence and reasoning. What do you like to do for introducing claim evidence reasoning? I'd love to hear what your suggestions are in the comments. Have a wonderful year. Thank you for watching another Adventures in iSTEM and Beyond video. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications for more Adventures in iSTEM and Beyond videos. For more ideas on how to incorporate science, technology, and skills for life into your classroom, go to adventuresinistem.com.